Hi everybody, my name is Mr Casey and I'm the Assistant Principal at St Court Wellacre. As I'm not able to come and meet you this year in your primary school and answer any questions you have, I put this video together to answer questions that I'm commonly asked. One of the first things I get asked about is the timings of the school day. You need to be on site for 8.40 at least every single day. The bell goes at 8.40 to tell you you need to make your way to period 1. And period 1 starts at 8.45 and lasts for an hour. You then leave that classroom and go straight to period 2, which is an hour period 2, which is an hour long and lasts until 10.45. And then you have break time, which lasts from 10.45 to 5 past 11. After break, you then go to period 3, which lasts until 5 past 12. And then you go straight to period 4, which finishes slightly early for year 7 at 1pm. And this is to allow you to get into the canteen and get queued up and get served first. Lunch then lasts till 1.40 and then you go to your tutor time. In tutor time, you might have an assembly, discuss current affairs, or focus on maths or literacy. Tutor time then finishes at five past two, and then you go straight to period five, which lasts until three o'clock. So school finishes at three o'clock every day, apart from Wednesday, when we stay for an extra lesson, which is part of our co-curricular programme, which I'll talk about a bit later on. At break and lunch time, you can go to the lower school yard, which is just a yard for year 7 and 8 to play football or basketball on. There's also outside gym equipment that you can use, or you can go and buy hot food from the canteen or sit and talk with your friends in the courtyard. We also recommend during this time that you go to the toilet, as you aren't allowed to go to the toilet in lessons unless you have a medical reason. To find your way around, on your first day you'll be given a map and a timetable. The timetable looks something very similar to this one. On the timetable, it tells you what subjects you have, which is indicated by a code, which group you're in, as well as the room and the teacher you have. The teacher code and the subject code will be explained to you on your first day. We operate over a two-week timetable, so you, so you do the first week, and then you do the second, and then you go back to week one and repeat that cycle. You might be nervous about navigating your way around the building. But once you've been to every classroom on your timetable at least once, you'll be absolutely fine. And of course, if you're not sure, just ask another student or remember. School dinners at Wellacre are really good, and there's a wide selection to choose from. You can see an example of one of the week's menus here. So the menus are on a three-week cycle, so there's lots of variety. With your lunch, there's free veg, salad, and water, and fruit is available for free throughout the day. Dietary requirements are catered for, so there's vegetarian and halal options, um, or you could bring a prep lunch if you prefer. The canteen is also open in the morning for breakfast from 8.15 and hot food is served at break time. At lunchtime, as mentioned before, Year 7s go in first before all of the year groups. So there's several stations serving different options, so you queue up at the area serving the food you want. And once you've received and eaten your food, you clear away after yourself and then you can go outside. It's worth bearing in mind though that you're not allowed to take your food outside of the canteen. It needs to be eaten inside. Another question that I often get is about uniform. So to clarify, we expect all our students to attend in full uniform, looking smart every day. And this is expected at all times when wearing the uniform, whether on site or making your way to or from school. So the uniform consists of black shoes, so not trainers, they must be black, they must be black shoes, dark grey trousers, white shirt, well like a grey jumper, your house tie and well like a blazer. If you do forget an item of uniform, you do need to bring a note in from your parent and go to the main office where we'll lend you the item. If you don't have a parental note though, the detention will be issued. There's also a well like a PE kit and as you can see from the picture, and this needs to be brought in and worn on all PE lessons. If you do lose a piece of uniform, please check lost property by going to the main office. We do recommend that you put your name on the tags of your uniform, just in case it gets lost or mixed up in the changing rooms. It's also worth noting that students aren't permitted to wear hoodies on site. Jewellery isn't permitted either, except for watches. And that your hair also needs to make sure it's neat and tidy, with no tram lines, patterns shaved in or dyed. You can get to school in a number of ways. Some students walk, some ride the bikes or catch the bus, some even get the train. 
If you do ride your bike, we have bike sheds where you can store your bike during the day. And these are locked at 8.40 and open again at 2.50 or 3.50 on a Wednesday. If you, do ride your bike, if you do ride your bike, we recommend that you bring a lock for it and you wear a helmet and high-vis clothing so that you're protected during your journey. There are bus stops around the corner from school where the 15, 245, 247, 256, 179 and the 798 stop so you could travel on any of them. If you do intend to travel by bus, you need to get an IGO pass first to prove that you're under 16 so that you're only charged the child fare. Flixton train station is five minutes walk away and several students use this mode of transport to get to school. We do try to dissuade parents from dropping students off as there are several schools on the same road and it can get very congested in the morning, especially as there's nowhere for parents to park. We recommend that whichever way you choose to travel to and from school, that you practice the journey at least once in advance so that you know your way and how long it takes. The expectations we have of our students are very simple. We expect that students strive to meet our core values at all times. So we expect our students to be honest, have pride in themselves, their appearance and their work, are respectful to themselves, others and their environment. That they aspire to be the best that they can that they can be and believe that they can succeed that they're resilient and they don't give up when things become tough and that they learn from their mistakes so our reward system is based on these core values and you will be rewarded when you've demonstrated any of these values these values we want to become instilled within you during the five years you spend with us and they will help you succeed in your future endeavors Another question I'm commonly asked is about detentions. So our behaviour system is called Choice Chance Consequence, which is commonly referred to as C1, C2, C3. So if you did something that you shouldn't in class, you may be given a C1. And this is a warning. So as long as you don't misbehave again, no detention, no detention or parental contact will be made. If you do misbehave again, a C2 will be issued. So this means that you'll have a 15 minute detention with that teacher at a break, lunch or after school and it will be logged on a system called Class Charts and this system automatically sends parents a message when you receive a behaviour point or a detention. If you were to misbehave again, a C3 would be issued, that means that you'd be removed from the lesson and placed in a hub to complete the work for that lesson. At the end of that lesson, you'd then go to your next timetable lesson but you would receive a 45 minute detention which will be served on either a Tuesday or a Thursday and your parents will be informed via class charts. At Wellacre, we call homework independent learning. So we receive independent learning tasks for every subject. Some subjects will set independent learning tasks more often than others because, for example, you have more English, science and maths lessons than you have lessons in other subjects. So independent learning tasks are set on a website called Class, Char called class Charts. And on Class Charts, you can access the task, see when it was set and the date it's due to be submitted. Your parents also have full access to it and they can see all of the tasks that you've been set. In September, Class Charts will be fully explained to you and your parent or carer and you'll be shown how to log on and how to use it. If independent study tasks aren't completed or submitted on time, you're likely to receive a C2 detention. On top of the independent learning tasks on class charts, we expect all students to read for 30 minutes every night. So when you first start, you'll have a reading test and an appropriate book will be given to you. Once you've finished it, you have to take an online test. And as you pass the tests, the books that you select from will increase in their level of change. At Wellacre, we have a house system. So you'll be placed into one of our three houses, which are Pankhurst, Lowry and Shoring. All of the houses are named after people linked with the local Wellacre community who have shown qualities and values we would like to be upheld by our students. As part of a house, you'll be working with other, with other students across year groups in your house to be awarded achievement and house points. During the year, there are house events that you can compete in, such as football, rugby, chess, spelling bees, Christmas bake-offs, quizzes, and many, many more. The house with the most points at the end of the year will receive the house trophy and a reward, such as a trip to Alton Towers. At Wellacre, there's a number of sports teams that you can join, including football, 
basketball, rugby. In addition to that, there's lots of opportunities for you to represent your house in the many house events that take place during the course of the year. Full details will be given to you how to represent sports teams and your house teams when you join. As mentioned earlier, when you demonstrate a Wellica core value, you'll be awarded achievement points. During the year, you can redeem your achievement points at the reward shop after choosing a reward from the list on the left on the class charts. The more achievement points you collect, the bigger the prize. There are also a number of trips that will be available during the year. For example, last year there was a skiing trip to Austria, a water sports trip to Spain, visits to Christmas markets in France, a trip to South Africa, Alton Towers, bushcraft residentials, pantomime trips, museum trips, just to name a few. And these opportunities will also be on offer to you once you join in September. Earlier, I mentioned that on a Wednesday we stay until 4 p.m. And this is because on a Wednesday between 3 and 4, we run our co curricular programme. This programme is where you get to choose from a list of about 30 to 40 activities that interest you. The list here is only a small selection of what's on offer. Period, period 6 is a wonderful opportunity to try out something that you might have never done before, been curious about or to learn a new skill. Every term you have the option of changing to a different activity if you wish. All of these activities are absolutely free. If you have a problem or are unhappy about something, the first person to speak to is either your achievement tutor, your head of house or assistant head of house. They'll be able to help you with any issues, problems or worries you might have. If you're struggling with classwork or independent study, it's best to speak to that subject teacher. If you're, strugg if you're struggling with work, the sooner you speak to your teacher, the better, and they'll be able to give you any extra help or support that you might need. If you're struggling with an independent study task, don't leave speaking to your teacher until the date's due to be in. See them in advance of the deadline so that you can get it done on time. If you do lose anything or have any uniform issues or misplace your timetable, you can go to the main office where they'll assist you. If you do feel unwell at any point, please let a member of staff know and then you'll be taken to the medical room. We also have a number of students who are trained anti-bullying ambassadors. They'll be introduced to you in September and you'll be able to identify them by the anti-bullying badge that they wear on their blazer. And they're available for you to talk to if there's any other student that's upsetting you. I've tried to answer as many of the commonly asked questions as possible in this video, but if there's something that I've not answered that you'd like to know, please feel free to send me an email and I'll answer your question for you. So I'll say bye for now and I'm looking forward to seeing you all in September.